Today we're going to be looking at Arsenal in a little bit of depth. So recently we have seen them struggle in both the league and the Champions League, most recently losing 5-2 to Bayern Munich on Wednesday evening in the Champions League, putting further pressure on Jonas Adebayor's future as manager and how he will cope throughout these coming few weeks and months. So let's have a look at this game against Bayern Munich in a bit more depth. So obviously we said they lost 5-2, but it's not just the scoreline that has put Arsenal into a little bit of a question mark. They lost 59% of their aerial duels, where we saw Bayern Munich score three of their goals from headers. Uh, now, some of that obviously can be blamed on Jonas Eidelberg himself, with how the team are set up or how the, the tactics are. But obviously, some of it has to be the players taking accountability and doing the basic stuff right, which is what we have uh, not seen from Arsenal for a bit of time. So it's going to be something that needs to be ironed out, and it is something simple. Um, defensively as well, because there was times where you could see that Arsenal had, had the ball on a, an attack and then Bayern Munich put it back, counter-attacking, and the defensive line was all over the place. There was times where you could, couldn't see Emily Fox at the right-back position or Kater McCabe had gone too far up and there was just holes in the back line and it just made it easy for Bayern Munich uh, to expose and really show Arsenal having a lot more problems than they actually need to be having at this minute in time. So if we have a look a bit more in depth on how these aerial duels had happened. Now, Penilla Harda managed to score a hat-trick and two of her three goals had uh, come from headers. She had six shots in the match uh, and she had the most touches in the opposition box out of any player who played in that game with 11. Now, if you compare that with Stina Blackstinius of Arsenal, she had the most touches with five, yet the Swede didn't even manage to get a single shot in the game. So that is also a bit worrying for Arsenal when if we look at how they're doing in terms of their attacking output, most of this season it has been uh, the likes of Frida, Leonard, some Mornham, Beth Mead has stepped up with a goal or two here and there. So it's a bit worrying when the likes of Russo and uh, Black Sinis aren't scoring in the league. Whilst they maybe have done it in the qualifying rounds of the Champions League and in pre-season, it's now when it actually matters in the competition uh, properly and obviously in the WSL. And that's something that definitely needs to be addressed as the uh, season goes on. Otherwise, it can be something that uh, will be really poor for Arsenal. And then another thing that uh, was really poor um, for Arsenal was Mariana Caldense. Now, again, this is not just singling out her, but she lost the ball 21 times throughout the game, uh, which was the most of any Arsenal player, which is a big, big thing. If you consider where she was uh, playing on the heat map, she was obviously out on that right-hand side a lot, trying to uh, cause Bayern's left-hand side a lot of problems, but it was actually flip reverse. They were getting a lot of pressure onto her and Arsenal's uh, right back Emily Fox and as you, as you can see on the heat map Caldente isn't getting back enough and helping out Emily Fox and you saw Bayern Munich just absolutely dominate their left hand side both time or both sides for Bayern Munich they were having a lot of fun on either flank uh, of the pitch causing a lot of problems for Arsenal in defence when it was getting the crosses in or just running at them naturally. Their defence seemed to struggle with that. And it's something that uh, Jonas Eidelberg needs to have a word with his players, whether it is about how they're attacking and then how they're coming back if they're getting counter-attacked or whether it's just how the players are communicating on the pitch, whether it's we all go over, we all push back one side, one or two of you go, someone else drops deep. It's something like that. That's basic football um, that these teams need to be sorting out. Otherwise, it could cause them a lot of problems down the line. And I think uh, for Arsenal, especially turn their attention now to this weekend, it's something that could cause them a lot of problems because we know what Chelsea's wide players can do. The likes of Johanna Wright and Canary, Lauren James, um, Guru Wright. And it's a lot of uh, attacking at this width and they can also not be afraid of cutting inside. So when you look at the likes of Leia Kadena, uh, Leah Williamson as well, it's something that... Um, Obviously, they're top, top defenders, but if they're having to deal with them, players cutting inside every time, and then also you have to think of Myra Ramirez up top and then potentially someone else in the middle also putting on uh, some pressure in the middle, it causes a massive overload and can cause a lot of problems for uh, Arsenal to be dealing with. And it's something I think Jonas definitely needs to be looking at over these next couple of days before uh, the game on Saturday against Chelsea. Now, obviously, looking ahead to this Chelsea game, it's not going to be if they lose. I think Jonas Eidelberg will be sacked. I'm not saying that at all. 
but pressure will be surmounting on them if they aren't uh, successful in picking up a result because they will obviously slip down the table how regardless um obviously thinking of how sunday's games go then it would be what they've gone three games without a win obviously drawing against everton last weekend the defeat to Bayern Munich, and then whatever happens in this game against chelsea if it's a defeat or a draw so it's adding a lot of pressure on you know Sardar, who's into his fourth season now they haven't really done well in the league and they don't look like they are going to do well this season because there's a lot of gaps between themselves, Chelsea and Manchester City, who I think those two teams are in a league of their own in terms of when it comes to uh, dueling it out for the league. But obviously Arsenal have had success in the former Conti Cup now, the League's Cup, uh, winning that for two seasons. But you can't be just aiming for that success. It's been years since they've won the WSL. They are obviously the only English side to win the Champions League, but it's been a few seasons since they've done well in the Champions League itself. So there are going to be question marks as to how Jonas Odebell changes things, how the players change things, because um, we said on our podcast, if you haven't, make sure you check that out on all podcast platforms. At times, Arsenal, even in the attacking sense, the players are too inverted and wanting to play too centrally rather than being the wide width players that they are needed because it then creates a hole uh, that they aren't able to expose or when you're trying to play a ball out wide, the likes of Beth Mead or Cal Dente aren't in those positions that you want them to be in because they're too far close into either Blackstenius or Russo. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, they tweak that heading into Saturday's game at the Emirates Stadium. And even the substitutions were a little bit strange um, headed back to that Bayern Munich game for as well a second they just got level then they make a triple sub including taking off Katie McCabe who had got uh, the assist for both goals so it's a little bit question marks as to that and then um, how they go about setting up this game uh, for Chelsea team sheet wise as well because they've got another Champions League game uh, next week against Valerenga um, so it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Jonas Adebel's side set up for Chelsea and can they actually get to winning uh, the game otherwise it will be a long um, rest of the season for Jonas Seidewell and there's obviously going to be question marks over his future uh, going forward. So let me know your thoughts on the whole situation with Arsenal. Can they fix the problems that they have? Is Jonas Seidewell the right man to continue leading them forward or would you look at potentially replacing him whether it be in the international break or later on in the season let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and in the meantime make sure you like and subscribe and turn on the post notification bell so you never miss a video of ours make sure you're following us on x or twitter at uh, wf talks for all the latest news and stories and on instagram it's women's football talk or one word and we'll have pieces out on our Substack page women's football talk.substack.com it's free to subscribe as well so make sure you check that out and in the meantime we'll see you soon